Hey guys, today we're making a new terrarium for my two frogs. So my little red eye tree frog and my white screen tree frog are getting a new home today, a much larger home and a much better one. So the new aquarium they're getting, or the new terrarium they're getting I should say, is a lot bigger than the one they're currently in. It's two foot, which is 60 centimeters by 14 inches by 20 inches tall. For those of you who can't visualize that, it looks a lot like this. <laughs> Decent size. So, yeah, as you can probably tell from me holding this, it's back the background that I, um, the Universal Rock background is already installed. So I pretty much did this last night, as you'll see right now. Um, so same as a lot of the stuff I do on this channel with DIY sort of stuff. I'm using black neutral cure silicon yet again, which works great for this sort of stuff. So generally all you're doing is just clean the, lay your tank down on its back, give the glass a clean of course, put big blobs of black silicon on the back of the tank, be rather generous, lay your background down, put some weight on, on top of it overnight. I just use the bag of soil which I'm going to be using for this terrarium as well to weigh it down and you leave it overnight. I also went down the edges as well just to make it look a bit neater. A couple of other items that I've accumulated just for this little terrarium are as such. So as I was saying, I'm using Amazonia soil for the substrate for this, for my plants. And as, you, as I just said, yes, I've got plants as well. I just got some assorted um, house plants. They seem to do really well in terrariums because they're low light plants. I kind of have to buy plants with rather large leaves and rather thick stems just because the frogs are kind of heavy. and. Um, they like to sit on the plants, so I'd rather get plants that can actually stand up to them. Just this little glass box, which I made myself. It's just going to be the water reservoir in this terrarium. And I've also got a bucket of stones. So these are just black garden stones. Got a whole bucket of them. They're just lying around in my garage. I'm going to use these for the drainage for this uh, terrarium as well. And the main thing in this terrain that the frogs are going to be climbing on is just this piece of driftwood which I picked up as well. So that's going to be the centerpiece. I'm going to have the plants growing in front and behind and around it. And yeah, that's basically it. So this terrain isn't going to be quite as extravagant as the last one where I made the expandable foam and the waterfall. I want this one to be more simple and I want it to be more plant orientated. Last one I was more basing it around having it as a water feature. This one I want it to be more like a forest. So I've gone with a lot, much larger tank to start with and I'm just going to have basically substrate in there with plants and just a water bowl which is that glass box I just showed you. That's going to be the water bowl which I always have to change regularly um, rather than an actual water feature. Alright, well that's enough of me chit chatting. Let's get to it. Okay, so first I'm adding my pebbles in. This is going to be basically my drainage. The idea is any extra water that my soil can't retain will just drain down into this layer of pebbles where it'll eventually just dry up instead of staying in the soil. And here is my fly screen I'm adding. The fly screen just acts as a barrier between your soil and your uh, stones basically so they don't get all mixed up, otherwise it just defeats the purpose of having them. Of course we're going to give it a quick mist down just to make it more pliable um, when I'm digging my holes to plant my plants in. So next I'm going to add some coconut fibre just as a second layer of substrate. While coconut fibre doesn't really serve much purpose for actually growing plants because it's pretty much got no nutrients in it, it is good to have multiple layers of substrate and the coconut fibre helps seal in some of that moisture in the soil. So next I'm just digging out a little hole for my little water box to go in. And of course I'm going to bury that. Partly the reason I wanted to make one out of glass as opposed to using an actual bowl is just because glass is completely transparent. I can bury it at ground level and it's going to look more like a natural little pool or a puddle in the ground rather than a bowl in a terrarium. One other thing I think I'll just mention guys is with the plants. Uh, depending where you're getting them from, if you're growing them yourself out in your garden and you don't, I guess, have to worry, you have more control over this, but if you're buying them from a nursery, 
um, or anywhere like that. Like I got these plants from Mitre 10. Uh, so yeah, most of the plants you buy from nurseries and um, hardware stores and stuff like that, you got to be careful putting them in terrariums with frogs because frogs are very sensitive to chemicals as they breathe through their skin and their skin's very absorbent. You don't want any chemicals in this terrarium. And the problem with these plants is they've got fertilizer in the soil, the little fertilizer beads. They've all got it through their soil, so I can't actually just take these out of the pot and put them straight in. I have to get this soil off their roots first and get, get them as clean as possible before I put them in. So one other thing I'd just like to maybe uh, clarify a little bit more, uh, reasons as to why I've made a drainage system in this terrarium with the stones, and I think it's very important for any um, terrarium with live plants when you're growing them this way, is just because when you water your plants, any excess water can just drain down into those stones and it just dries up. Also the plant's roots sometimes poke through the uh, fly screen over time and they can just drink it when they feel like it. Uh, if you don't do this, any extra water just stays in your substrate and you end up getting mold and it ends up smelling and it ends up rotting your plant's roots as well. It's not very good. So I'd highly recommend drainage for any terrarium, whether it's with stones or any other way you see fit. So next I'm just adding some sphagnum moss as the final layer of substrate. Again, the sphagnum moss doesn't directly add any nutrients to the plant's growth, but it helps retain a bit of moisture and humidity within the substrate because coconut fibre being the top layer isn't always the greatest thing because coconut fibre in itself left exposed can dry out quite fast but if you put a layer of sphagnum moss over the top it keeps it relatively moist as well. That and sphagnum moss just looks way nicer than coconut fibre. I'm also going to be implementing a misting system into this enclosure. I just haven't uh, received it yet. It's been ordered, so hopefully by this time, ne by this time next week, I will have it and I can update you guys on it. So the misting system I want to implement into this enclosure is the uh, Reptile One uh, Humidity Mister. I'll put a picture of it up there. Um, so they're actually quite good. Uh, I'm going to have that running on a timer, so it just comes on for like say 10 minutes every hour or every half an hour or something like that just to keep the humidity up in the enclosure. The plants will appreciate it as well as it'll leave a lot of water condensation on everything so they'll, everything will stay nice and moist and wet 
but not too wet that everything's going to become mouldy and overly damp. That's why I'm going to put it on a timer. Well, that's it for me, guys. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and a comment if you want as well. I'll leave my Instagram down below if you want to follow me there. Give us a sub while you're at it if you're new to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.